Hey, what's happening guys? Today we are going to do another Arduino for Kids project. And you know, it's good for adults too. And in this one, we're going to use some LEDs. In this case, they're bright pink ones. I mean, they're really bright. I've got six of them here. And then we've got some current limiting resistors. In this case, we're using 330 ohms. Now, if in general practice with these LEDs, which have a forward voltage of about three volts, I would generally use 220 ohm, but these things are incredibly bright. So I'm using the 330 to kind of quiet them down a little bit, so to speak. And then we got some jumper wires and that's really it. So to hook our project up, we are going to use the PWM pins. Now, if you're not sure what that is, those are pins three, five, six, nine, ten, and eleven. The pins with the squiggly. Okay. So we're just going to take our jumper wires and go from pin three. Just like this. And then pin five. And we're going to skip two spots on the breadboard. You can skip as many as you want. It doesn't matter. And pin six. Again, I'm going to skip two spots on the breadboard. All that really matters is you keep it nice and neat and even looking. You can do whatever kind of layout you want. That's pin nine. That's pin 10. And pin 11. So, okay, those are all of our jumper wires hooked up. Now we need a complete circuit. So we're gonna plug into our ground wire we're going to bring it down to the blue line down here at the bottom. Now I'm going to zoom in here a little bit for you. Now I'm going to take my LEDs and the longer leg is the anode, the positive side. And I'm going to plug it in the same vertical row as where the wires are. Okay. So long leg to the wires, and then it's going to jump across that gap. And we'll do that for each of the six pins we got here. Now, if you're wondering why we need to use the resistors, it's to limit the current that goes into the LEDs. These LEDs, light emitting diodes, are very sensitive to current. And if you want to keep them healthy, you want them to work at around 20 milliamps. Okay, now I'm going to plug in the resistors from the blue line to anywhere in the vertical row where our LED is. So I was saying you want them to run somewhere in the 20 amp milliamp area. 15 milliamps is good. 10 milliamps is okay. I mean, you can run them down as low as four or five milliamps. They're just not going to be as bright, but you don't want to run them any more than say 20 milliamps. I mean, you can get away with 30, but you're pushing it. You're going to um, definitely shorten the life of your LEDs. Now each of the pins, digital pins on the Arduino, um, is capable of handling 40 milliamps, but we want to keep it way under that. So we're going to keep it at around 17 milliamps or so is what it's going to be with this configuration. And what that does is just lets everything run a little bit cooler. So there's everything set up as you can see. From the digital pin on the Arduino 
to the anode, the plus side of the LED, from the cathode, the minus side of the LED, to either side of the resistor, they're not polarized, and then to ground. All right, before we get to the code, do you want to see what happens to an LED when you don't limit its current? Okay, I'll show you. Okie dokie. There's a red 5 millimeter LED which has similar characteristics to the pink ones. I've got it hooked up to my bench power supply. Now this LED needs 3 volts and about 10 milliamps to turn on and look nice. We're going to give it 30 volts and 3 amps and see what happens. Are you ready? Nothing, but I guarantee you it's blown up on the inside. Sadly, LEDs don't blow up nearly as dramatically as other components. For example, here's an electrolytic capacitor. This is 10 microfarad at 10 volts. I'm going to hook it up backwards to 30 volts and 3 amps. What do you think will happen here? Okay, here is our sketch for the Arduino for Kids LEDs. First part is our setup, and we need to set each of our LEDs that we're plugged into as an output so they'll light up. So 3, 5, 6, 9, 10, and 11. Of course, those are our PWM pins. We're going to use this setup again in a later video, so that's why we're using those. Then we're going to turn on all of our LEDs to make sure they're working. So digital right, 3, 5, 6, 9, 10, and 11 high. We'll leave them on for one second. And then we'll turn them all off by writing digital right, 3, 5, 6, 9, 10, and 11 low. Now, down here is our loop. And you see it looks kind of strange because we're just calling some weird looking functions. So we're writing this in functions so it's not all in loop and that makes it kind of easy. So our first function is called randomness. And what it does is it turns on a random LED for 100 milliseconds. And we've written it in a for next loop so it'll do it 20 times. Now the first thing we do is we use this random seed function to set a random number because random numbers in computers aren't really random but this will help make it more random so random seed is an analog read of pin 0 which is analog pin 0 and since there's nothing attached to analog pin 0 it's going to float so it could be any value and that's what our random seed will be next we're going to create an integer variable called i that is equal to a random number between 2 and 12 It'll actually be between 2 and 11. So that'll give us the range of all of our pins. Now, some extra ones will be in there too that we're not using, but it really won't matter. Then we're going to digital write i, which is our random number. Say it comes up 3, so we'll digital write 3 high. We'll leave it on for 100 milliseconds. Then we'll digital write 3 low, which will turn it off, and we'll wait for 100 milliseconds. Then it'll go back up here because we're still in this for loop and it will create a new random number. See, that'll work out pretty nice. Our next function is Larson. That is the Larson scanner. And if you've ever seen the old TV show from the 80s, Knight Rider, this is what the front of the car did. And I put this integer variable called WT here so you can change the variable for the wait time and change how fast they move. The larger the number, the slower it'll move. So basically what it does is we turn on the first LED, digital right 3 high. We leave it on for the length of the wait time. 
then at the same time we turn it off and turn the next one on. So it's a seamless jump from one to the next. And we do that through all of the pins. Finally, I couldn't come up with a good name for this, so I'm just calling it NERP. And what it does is it switches between what I'm calling the odds and evens. So when it first lights up, it's going to light up 3, 6, and 10. The second time, it's going to light up 5, 9, and 11. So the first thing we do, and again, this is in a for loop, so it's going to do it 20 times. We light up 3, 6, and 10 at the same time. We wait for 200 milliseconds. Then we shut them off, and at the same time, turn on the next bunch. So it just kind of pops back and forth. Now that's it for our functions, and then here in our loop, we just call our functions. So we say, let's nerp. So 20 times it'll do that 3, 6, 10, 5, 9, 11. Then we wait for a second. Then 20 times it'll blink a random LED. We wait for a second. Now for Larson Scanner, I didn't put in a uh, for loop. So you can call this one as many times as you want. And of course you can change these around and experiment and have fun with it. So that's the code. Let's go take a look at what it really looks like in action. Alrighty, everything is set up. Let's power it up and watch what happens. So there's our lights on. Now we're nerping. And next is random. So we're just flashing some random LEDs. And our final one will be the Larson scanner. And then back to nerping. And that's it. Hey, I hope you guys enjoyed this. It's a simple project and we are going to add to it in another video. That's why we use the PWM pins. So in the, our next Arduino for Kids video, we're going to use some analog rights so that we can vary the brightness of these. So if you liked it, give me a thumbs up, comment, share. Don't forget to subscribe and I'll catch you next time.